Hello, welcome to today's session, Course Approval 101, Consumer Health for Library Students. This is today's agenda and it goes as follows. We're gonna do introductions. Then we're gonna talk briefly about the Medical Library Association, talk about the Consumer Health Information Specialization, CHIS, Consumer Health for Library Students, universities approved to offer CHIS, requirements and steps for class approval. Our faculty sp spotlight today is Brenda, Len Brenda Linares and student spotlight, Maggie Haberdinian. <laughs> and we're gonna have our question and answer time. So if you still have any lingering questions, we can address those there. And also feel free to put your questions that you do have in the chat. So hello, my name is Jamia Williams. I use she, her pronouns. I am the Consumer Health Program Specialist at the Network of the National Library of Medicine Training Office, NTO. Today I have my colleague, Sam Nunn, who is the program manager from the NTO, who's helping me co-facilitate today's session. Sam is here to answer any questions that you may have about the program. In today's session, again, we have Brenda Linares and is our faculty spotlight speaker, and Maggie Haberdinian is our student spotlight speaker. So I want to set the foundation for today's session with some background information. The Medical Library Association, MLA, is a global nonprofit educational organization with a membership of more than 400 institutions and 3,000 professionals in the health information field since 1898. MLA has been fostering excellence in the professional practice and leadership of health sciences library and information professionals to enhance healthcare, education, and research throughout the world. MLA educates health information professionals, supports health information research, promotes access to the world's health sciences information and works to ensure that the best health information is available to all. So what is CHIS? CHIS is the Consumer Health Information Specialization, and it's a way that librarians, other information and health professionals can acquire skills and knowledge needed to become confident, expert provider of health information to our community. Your CHIS shows employers colleagues and the public you serve that you are committed to offering quality consumer health information services and that you want to stay current with the developments in consumer health information resources technologies and services in partnership with mla nnlm guides lis and i school professors on getting their class approved to offer chis certificates to students Students earning a CHIS certificate through their LIS program is a great way for students to show their future employers that they've gained the skills and the knowledge in becoming a confident person that provides health information services to consumers. Additionally, this is a great tool to use to recruit more students to register for your class and introduce students to the health sciences and medical librarianship. Usually there is a $99 application fee that recipients would have to pay to receive their certification. However, through NNLM's CHIS sponsorship program, we cover the entire application fee. So it is 100% free to the students. So apply and get that money. We like that. <laughs> so these are currently the eight LIS, LIS slash iSchool programs that are participating in the program with a total of 12 classes approved to offer level one and level two CHIS cert certificates. So some examples of class approved to offer CHIS certificates are consumer health information, fun fundamentals of medical librarianship, consumer health informatics, and graphic novels in libraries. We would love to have your program be part of this list. In order to get approved to offer CHIS, your course must address one or more of the eight core competencies for providing consumer health information. NNLM and MLA will work with you to ensure that your coursework entails the CHIS competencies listed. 
So to qualify for level one certificate, the class must cover the first competency, which is know the community. The second one is know the health consumer. The third, knowledge of subject matter and resources. The fourth, evaluation of health information. The fifth, communication, reference, and instruction. To qualify to offer level two certificates, the class must cover the following competencies in addition to the level one requirements. So six is literacy and health literacy. Seven is technology and health. Eight, ethical and legal issues. Each level requires 12 MLACE credit hours of coursework. So now I will explain how to get your course approved to offer CHIS. The instructions I'm sharing today will be made available on NNLM's website soon. As some of you may know, MLA's main website and MedLibEd was recently updated and they're still working on getting some pages up and running, including the application to apply to offer CHIS. The steps and information required for the application will remain the same as before. Once the web pages are available, we will send all registrants the guide on how to apply to get a course approved to offer CHIS with the links to the pages. So step one is to contact Sam Nunn, who is in our webinar today at NNLM, and Jim Westfield from MLA to notify your interest in applying to get your course approved to become an MLA Consumer Health Information course. This will let MLA and NNLM know that they will be expecting an application from you. Step two, email Jim Westwood your course syllabus and description on how the course covers one or more of the eight CHIS competencies for review. You are welcome to use a table located on page three of the MLA course approval guide to describe which competency the course covers. By providing MLA the description of how the course covers the CHIS competencies prior to your official application submission, they can provide feedback on how it can be improved to ensure it covers the competencies if necessary, and to address any questions that you may have about your class. This is an opportunity to answer their questions and make any adjustments before your final submission. Plus, this is a great way for MLA to get to know more about the course. Here's the example of the table located on page three of the MLA course approval guide to describe which competencies the course covers. Step three, once Jim Westwood verifies that your course aligns with one or more CHIS competencies, you go to the MLA application portal to fill out your application. Note that you do not have to be an MLA member to apply. You will need to have an MLA account to complete the form. Feel free to request a guest account if you are not an MLA member. Step four, throughout the process, please keep in touch with Jim and Sam on the status of your application. If you have any questions about the required information, you're welcome to contact Sam or Jim. Step five, once you submitted the form, notify Jim or Sam, notify Jim and Sam of your completion. MLA will review your application and a representative will contact you about your submission. Now, I will share some important information to keep in mind as you will fill out your application. When choosing the submission type, select NLM and NNLM courses only. This selection helps MLA identify that you are participating in the CHIS for Library Students program, and you won't be charged the usual fee associated with offering the CHIS certificate. If you do not receive a notification for payment, if you do receive a notification for payment, don't pay the fee. Reach out to Sam and Jim, and they'll take care of it. Through this partnership, MLA will not charge the application fee for anyone participating in the program. If you receive a notification for payment, again, reach out to Sam, none. When you reach the MLA CE credit section of the form, it will ask you to indicate how many MLA CE credits you seek approval. The CE hours can be determined by the number of hours of in-person work done in the class. So one hour of in-person work is equivalent to one CE credit. When you have reached the term approval section, it will ask you to indicate how long you would like your course to 
to be eligible for MLACE. Click the drop down button and choose three years. This will allow you to offer MLACE credit for up to three years. There are no additional fees. If you are planning to teach your class again, you will need to fill out the Schedule A course on the Med, the Med Lib Ed form to schedule the course on Med Lib Ed before the semester begins. This form notifies MLA that you are teaching the class again. They will generate a new code for you to give to your future students to claim credit after completing the course. If you don't want your class listed on Med Lib Ed, you can notify MLA to remove your class from the list. Some universities like having their class promoted on MedLib Ed, while others prefer to have it not listed. Okay, so next up is Brenda Linares, the Associate Dean of Library Services at UMKC, Libraries at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Brenda was previously the School of Nursing Liaison at the University of Kansas Medical Center. Brenda received her bachelor's in finance from California State University, Northridge. She also has a master of library and information science from the University of California, Los Angeles, and a master of business administration from North Carolina State University. She is a member of the Academy of Health Information Professionals, AHIP. She loves working and building relationships with students, faculty, resources, and researchers in the community. Brenda currently serves on the MLA Board of Directors. She recently started her term as the president of the Medical Library Association, MLA. She has worked with diverse populations promoting health literacy and consumer health education. Her interests include outreach, consumer health, in instruction and technology, health literacy, patient education, and evidence-based research, mentoring, DEI, leadership, and management. Her extensive expertise and experience as a health sciences librarian has provided her with opportunity to teach as an adjunct instructor for Emporia State School of Library Information Management, where she has taught courses on information seeking behavior, consumer health, and health sciences librarianship. Brenda will share her success story in teaching CHIS certified courses through Emporia State University. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm really um, excited to be here to share my experience. I really enjoy teaching the course because as a practicing health sciences librarian, it's something that uh, I enjoy um, sharing my story. So let me see uh, if I can share my um, slides very quickly. Okay, so great. So uh, I'm probably going to share briefly my experience teaching the class. You heard a lot about the process and how it works to work with uh, NNLM and MLA. So I'm hoping that some of this information could be useful for you as you think about teaching this class. So some of the things I want to share with you is sharing my, um, you know, teaching the class, what I include in the class, just briefly, um, the application process with you already heard, but just kind of sharing my own experience, the benefits of offering that to your students, and, you know, maybe advice to the faculty that maybe are not sure about doing that, and and, and then um, uh, some comments from some of the students that have um, done the certification. So experiencing offering this class, uh, I've been teaching as an adjunct instructor for Emporia since um, spring 2017. And I really enjoy, have taught uh, information seeking behavior classes and different classes. Um, and I was very fortunate that because of my health sciences background, I was invited to teach this, uh, the consumer health information class, which is um, LI-886. That's why they call it in Emporia. And I've been able to teach this class, as you can see, um, summer 2020, summer 2021, fall 2022, fall 2023. And I'm gonna be teaching that class again this coming fall, which I'm excited about. Um, and so in terms of the class, I'm making sure that, you know, um, I'm covering the different requirements of the class and the topic that, uh, that is needed to get that certification. And the students are very receptive. And I try to make the class very, uh, you know, user friendly because a lot of people tend to be intimidated about the topic itself because when they hear health sciences, they they they, they feel like they don't have the skills or the training. And so I try to make it, um, you know, as as user friendly as more like a, you know, uh, think about it. You could be a patient. You know, your family member could have a question about a health topic, so they understand. You know that this is something that is not relevant to other people, but also to themselves. Um, and so I cover a lot of the 
um, the different topics and resources and databases that are um, a lot of the times from, from the National Library of Medicine. And one of the things that I bring to that experience is the fact that um, early on in my career, I actually had that certification and how I used it when I was practicing librarian. Um, you know, I went through the level one and level two uh, and, and how it was useful to have that certification working with the community, working with um, collaborating with the, the medical students, with the public libraries and, and, and how useful it was also for my own self and when my family had questions about health topics. So that's something that I bring to that, with that training and the students really like some of the exercises um, that we have because of the fact that, you know, they, uh, in once in a while I get to, I have a panel of librarians that join the class. And so it's really, uh, they really enjoy hearing some of the librarians sharing their stories and what they actually do. Um, as a consumer health librarian, but also they tend to hear about some of the resources that they're learning in our class or some of the services and things like that, that they can see is relevant to them. And they're doing it in one, in one class, which is great because that way they get to, uh, you know, learn from each other and also have it in one semester class. Um, you heard a lot about the application process for getting your course um, certified. Um, I'm involved with MLA, so I know a lot of the staff in there, and they're very helpful when I'm reaching out to renew my certification to make sure that a CE um, is valid for three years, as you heard early in, in, in the session. And so there's a lot of good communication happening between the MLA staff and the NNLM staff to make sure that they have the information of the students that um, are taking my class to have the information of the students when they're submitting their paperwork for their certification and accessing the website um, in MLA specifically to get the specific codes they need, um, do it in a timely manner. So a lot of the communication that happens between the faculty and the and both of the staff of MLA and, and NLM tends to be going tends to go very smoothly because there's a lot of uh, good communication going back and forth. Uh, and, you know, as um, you heard earlier, the thing is making sure that if, as you can see, uh, I've taught uh, the class since 2020, kind of going back and saying, okay, do I need to renew that information within MLA to make sure that um, if I teach it again and I want students to get the CHIS uh, certification, that it's up to date and I'm making sure that that communication is ongoing. Um, and keeping that accreditation up to date. And also, as you can see, it's a very straightforward um, process where I've emailed them and within 24 hours, I have uh, the information needed that I can send my students, you know, the last week of classes. So they know, hey, your semester is ending. Here's the information you need to make sure that you follow uh, with MLA to get that, um, that certification. And so all of that, communication has gone very smoothly and um, and students um, have gone that that um, really quickly. So what's the benefit of offering um, that certification in your in your class and your programs? Um, I think it's really great to have that elective being offered in a lot of the um, LIS programs. A lot of the times even me as a hiring um, a librarian when I when we look into hiring health sciences, um, people, a lot of the times, some of the programs might not offer that specialization in health sciences. And I think this is a good opportunity for students to take that class. And I mentioned health sciences, but a lot of the times, some of those students might want to go into public libraries or even other specializations where having an understanding of consumer health resources is going to be useful in the positions that they're going to have. So offering this elective can increase their skills and open other possibilities of things that they might not even have thought about um, skill that they can bring when it comes to interviewing for jobs. Um, and so uh, this class, if you offer it, opens up those opportunities of things that and skills that people might not even thought about pursuing or it could be intimidating when they see just those job descriptions. And by taking those classes as part of the program, and learning, they feel more comfortable with it as they learn about the resources and what kind of questions they might have um, related to um, to consumer health resources. Um, and again, a lot of the times it's good to have this early on. So when they're applying for jobs, that's something that they can add as a credential in their CV and their resumes and can be a good talking point when they're interviewing 
if the position requires some type of certification or experience with um, consumer health resources. Um, and so it's always good um, you know, for programs to have different electives that are um, more specialized um, and can make that student be marketable when they're looking for jobs. Um, and that way they get exposed to it early on instead of pursuing that uh, certification after they get hired for a position. I think this is a good way for them to uh, be aware of um, some of the training and already have it in their CV early on. And because the uh, NLM covers the expenses, they don't have to pay for it and it's already part of their CV. Uh, what's the, some of the advice that I uh, would provide faculty? Like you saw in the conversations earlier, is it's an AC process. Um, a lot of the times, uh, you know, colleagues in different programs, we talk to each other. So if you feel intimidated about creating something from scratch, you can always reach out to other faculty to hear what they're doing, how they created the class. Um, because as librarians, we like to share ideas, we like to share resources, um, and, and and please reach out to um, to have a conversation if you're interested. Um, and and I'll be happy to share my um, my syllabus or kind of what what kind of assignments or um, things are added to the class that would be relevant if you're interested in, in putting that in your program. Um, you have support, you're not alone. Like I mentioned, other faculty will be happy to talk to you. You have the support, support from NNLM and MLA in, in making sure that class can get that accreditation, making sure that you have the information needed to provide to your students so they can get that certification, get paid for. Um, and it's a good way for um, schools to uh, partner with um, MLA and, and NLM um, and build that, that um, collaboration in, in, in partnership that is not just good for the this particular class, but it could be a good um, partnership moving forward for future projects. As you know, with the health sciences specialization, we want to have more um, recruitment or more um, librarians into the profession. And this is a good way of getting to the library students early on um, when it comes to training them with some of the resources that they might be using when they, they go into the workforce. Um, and it's helpful for them. And it's a good, easy way to, to have it be part of the curriculum and, um, and learning as they go through the program itself. Uh, you know, one of the takeaways from being able to teach this class is we offer it to the students uh, because they're the ones uh, that are registering the program. But in some occasions, uh, I basically have had, had students that are either practicing librarians that they want to take that class and just you know take one class and learn um, that 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 topic and get that certification and get paid for. Uh, I mentioned earlier about how there's need for more training on consumer health resources. We saw that when it came to um, going through um, through COVID and how there's a, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And so there's a lot of need for people specifically in our profession to be aware of um, credible and authoritative information out there and that they might be uh, having to work with patrons that might have questions about health topics. And this is a good way of getting them um, trained and, and having that exposure early on um, on this topic. And so... Again, I mentioned held the health sciences profession, but I also mentioned that it's not just for that people that are going to be health sciences librarians, people that are going to be public librarians, they get a lot of those questions when they work in that field. So having that certification, having that elective be offered as, as part of their um, curriculum opens up more skills for them to know. And I think the way of promoting it is the fact that it's not just for people interested in health sciences librarianship, it's people that are gonna be dealing with patients, with the community, with people that might need more um, understanding about health literacy, patient education. This is a good opportunity for exposing them to that and that training and that free certification. Here's some comments that I've used in the past that, from students that I'm, it, it helps to see that the class is being useful and people are learning a lot and, and, and helping them, um, you know, not just in their profession, working with others and colleagues, but also with family members. As you saw this one, it says, I just wanna let you know that I got my level two CHIA certification. Thanks for a great class. 
And, and then I like this one that I always use is on a personal note. I also want to let you know that I was able to use the skills I learned in this class to convince my sister to get vaccinated. I will be forever grateful I took this class if for no other reason for that. So as you can see, it creates a good impact on the, on the person that takes it. And, and that um, it's not just only, um, it's about providing services to other people in the public and colleagues, but also um, it benefits uh, their own self. And so I um, really enjoy teaching the class. Every student has different levels of understanding about what consumer health is. And um, I've seen that at the end of taking this class, their understanding increases and the fact that they can get uh, this type of accreditation definitely boosts their CV and resume and they have something to talk about when it comes to their interviews and their skills that they bring when they're going out there and um, could be potential librarians that are going to be hired. I'm happy to talk more about it and answer any questions. Um, I hope you definitely consider that um, teaching that class and definitely reach out if you have any questions about the actual class itself um, to provide you more examples about how, how my class is um, structured and what content I teach. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda. All right, so Maggie will share her experience, her experience receiving HS certification from ESU's LIS program. So now we will give the floor to Maggie. So much. Um, my name is Maggie Harabedi, and thank you so much for the opportunity to, to share about this certification with you all. Because I just graduated from Emporia State University. I'm a part time medical librarian here at Wesley Medical Center in Wichita, Kansas. And I can't express how much this certification has meant to me as a librarian, as a budding health science librarian. It, it, it's, I'm really passionate about it. So, I'm glad to talk about this. Um, let's see. So I first heard about this certification when I was talking to Dr. Bardell. I had just gotten the opportunity to be a medical librarian and I had an interest in health science, but I didn't have a background in, um, I, my background was English. And so I actually had a job um, in the health science and then I took these two courses and it really expanded my opportunity of what I could do in this position and my understanding of what my community needed and how I could uh, uh, address that in my position and also how I could help uh, physicians and residents do that as well as administration with their policies, um, which I'll get to in just a little bit. But I understood that all I had to do was take two classes. I didn't need to do anything else, but just, um, you know, submit a code and I would earn it. And, um, it was my two most favorite classes I've ever taken in a graduate program, which should mean something because I have two master's degrees. Um, I really appreciated what I learned there. Um, when looking over the different competencies for this certification, I realized that everything I took basically in the two classes of health science librarianship with Dr. Vardell and consumer health information with Professor Linares was aligned perfectly. Um, so just to talk a little bit about what I did during those two classes, um, we did real world applications. Uh, it wasn't just theory. So I feel really confident in being able to, you know, talk about a, a website that I created in LibGuide for gestational diabetes. I worked on a grant with a fellow student um, for an NNLM grant. I interviewed health science librarianships. I did a presentation over CINAHL. I answered uh, consumer health questions throughout the semester that made me feel really comfortable in being able to do it in my position and any future positions I had. I now know um, basically enough about prismas and mesh and research questions and search strategies to do presentations comfortably in my job. And it has really inspired me to learn even more. So I take classes all on my own just to learn more about these topics as well. So it really inspired me to learn more and I feel confident in being the health science librarian that I am today. And when it came to actually earning the application, um, it was seamless. It was stress-free. Uh, Professor Linares gave us a checklist. I followed it. I had submitted it within minutes. And I think maybe it took a week or so and I had received my um, the, uh, the CHIS and also a little logo for my email, which I now proudly include in every single one of my emails. Um, and I know that I have this for three years and that's really important for someone just starting off in a librarianship program. 
And now I also want to kind of talk about how I apply it to my current role as a part-time medical librarian. Just earlier this morning, I was doing a presentation on library services to medical students and residents, and I dedicated an entire section of it to consumer health resources. And I know I could see their interest in their eyes when I brought up Ethnomed and all of these other resources that they might have been aware of, maybe not. Uh, I brought up a health literacy toolkit that I'm super passionate about. And I just know that in connecting with people like medical students and residents, they're gonna carry that throughout their entire career. They're gonna bring it to the community of Wichita. They're gonna bring it to their um, physicians. Uh, they're gonna bring it to their families. And so um, that in itself, I could bring resources to them. And on a more personal level, I didn't really realize how many barriers there were to patients until I took um, the classes uh, required for the CHIS. And now I understand the uh, health disparities in my community. I know how to find resources for them. I know how to advocate for them. If I'm in you know, a hospital committee or speaking with someone in administration. So it allows me to be a patient advocate in ways that I had never imagined. And I think it's important for a librarian to be able to have that in mind um, even though the majority of work that I do is connecting physicians and residents, but when I'm working with administration throughout the hospital, I can always keep that in mind where it, you know, could always, everyone needs a reminder of like health literacy, you know, and that's a thing that a librarian could really do. Um, it's prepared me to um, possibly expand this role if ever given the opportunity to assist the patrons of um, the hospital that come in. I know that if my career ever leads me to, um, like uh, Professor Lunari said, like a public library, there's people turn to their public libraries for medical reference questions all of the time. And I think it's going to increase. And um, personally, I also feel comfortable in even doing it with my family. You know, we recently got a diagnosis of Alzheimer's and I know that the adults in my family wanted to help, but they didn't know where to start. And this is the type of thing that is so important is knowing the different resources and knowing the barriers and connecting people to this type of information. I also bring the, this lens of, you know, like my community, the health consumer to every clinical research question that I'm engaged in. Um, so if someone brings me a question of how to do a PICO, I can always bring up, you know, what might you need to know about the patient or how can I connect you with different services for the patient? So I really do think it um, it's opened my eyes to the possibility of what I can do in my position and also how I can indirectly or directly connect, um, basically benefit my community by doing that as well. Um, and, you know, uh, it makes me a competitive candidate. It uh, makes me a better internal employee for my hospital. And that's what I care about, um, being the best that I could possibly be for um, the community. And any advice that I might have for students considering this, um, coming from someone, like I said, that doesn't have a medical background, it is so exciting to be connected to all the different resources that are out there. It's a, it's a topic that anyone could easily be passionate about healthcare and the resources that CHIS connects you with. So I would say, go for it. Um, absolutely go for it. It's, it's broadened my eyes. It's connected me to so much information. And I, I feel like I can make a difference now that I have the CHIS under my belt. And the same goes for professors. If you're considering adding this to your um, to your syllabus to uh, connect it with CHIS, you never know who might be interested. And all it takes is for maybe a little incentive, like a certification to look into it um, for the resume or maybe a professor just talking about what you might learn. Again, not coming from a medical background, I was a little intimidated, but I can say easily this was one of my most favorite classes I ever did. And I'm really glad that I could add the CHIS to my resume and my email signature. Um, I'm very happy for the opportunity to do that and speak with you today. So unless you have any questions for me, um, that is kind of what I wanted to speak to you about today. Well, thank you so much, Maggie. I appreciate your enthusiasm and the great way you tied in you know, the benefits from your personal and also your professional, which is always, you know, a great asset when 
getting chess and that's what we appreciate and love about this specialization that you can have that tie-in. So we are going to open the floor for questions. So if you have any, feel free to uh, put that in the chat. And thank you for attending today's session. We appreciate from hearing from our speakers and thank you for speaking with us today. So again, feel free to put your questions in the chat, raise your hand and we'll call on you to speak. Here is our contact information. Please feel free to email us with any questions that you may have. And I'll open up the floor. So helpful, thank you. Very helpful, thank you. For, so you're welcome, thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you, very informational, helpful meeting. You're welcome, thank you. All right, stop sharing my screen. All right, yes, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, as Sam said, and you'd like to express your interest in participating in the program, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching. This video was produced by the Network of the National Library of Medicine. Select the circular channel icon to subscribe to our channel, or select a video thumbnail to watch another video from the channel.